Hello everyone and welcome to this new Anima Coffee Break Talk. I am Miguel Avedendo and I will be your host today. And the topic of today is how to import custom motion clips. Okay, so let's start and open Anima. Okay, so today we will be more uh, more work on the editing mode. In a previous uh, webinar, we, uh, we talked about how this editing mode works and how we can access it through this button here, which is a toggle button, to switch between drawing mode, the actual mode in which I'm working, okay, where I can create uh, simulation elements, and the editing mode where I can manage and customize actors and motion groups, okay? So, uh, first of all, what I want to point out is yeah, keep in mind that since we are working, sorry, talking about motion clips, keep in mind that we have several categories of motion clips. Why I'm telling you this? Because today we are talking about how to work with categories, to create them, and also how to create tags. But before this, we start talking about how to import motion clips. So we need to go here, switching to the editing mode. I won't dive into details about the interface or the editing mode. If you want to know more about it, there are previous webinars. And of course, there is a complete course about Anima. We will talk about this at the end of, the, of this webinar, OK? So here we have the split view, OK? And this view is here in the complete version where I can see the animation applied, the motion clip assigned to this, playing in this case for this actor. And on the right side, we have the structure of the skeleton. Okay, we can um, touch and to make changes. Now, here we have to on the left, sorry, oh, sorry, I didn't want to do this, but I did. Okay, and that's it. We have on the left these two panels the actor panel and the motion clip panel, okay? Now, if we want to add a, a new motion clip, we already saw in previous webinars, we can go to collapse the system uh, section in the motion clip library and access to the project section. Here we have this plus button. If we left click this plus button, we open this pop-up, which let us import a new clip. Before we saw how to import purchased animations purchased on, for example, the official Access Design website, where you can buy uh, characters and motion clips. But today, we will be working with a custom motion clip, OK? So we will be focusing on how to export and prepare for the export from a 3D program and from a different platform, OK? Just to have more than one way of doing this, OK? So I will be uh, opening here an FBX file, OK? In this case, I already have an FBX file, but we still haven't seen how to export this FBX file. So what I should do is, now that I have one, okay, click on this head, head FBX, sorry, and here you can see that we can import FBX or .y, which are the anima format, okay? So if you buy, for example, a motion clip, you will have, or an actor, you will have it in that .y format okay so we would click on open in, in this case every in spanish okay but it's exactly the same we would have to set the correct um, unit and this is very important as we already uh, talked about in previous webinars since if we don't set the correct scale we have been working on in the free program we have created this motion clip okay we would have problem in the scale of the animation imported. So we would have problem, for example, we would see the model too small, too big, and so on and so forth, okay? And then we have an automatic rotation um, option. By default, it's set to yes. So if we, for example, have a specific rotation, then this option should be fine, should be able to detect that, um, that orientation, or we could, for example, set it manually. Okay, so we could import this, and actually we will do this. So I click import, okay, and, but before doing this, just a second, okay, I will cancel it at the moment because I don't want to import directly in anime. I want before explaining you how to um, export from, in this case, 3ds Max, 
Okay. Now, the process I'm going to follow to export in FBX is quite similar, if not identical, to other 3D software, such as Maya or Cinema 4D. And basically, all the software, 3D programs, that lets you um, create a 3D animation and then export it into the FBX format. Okay, so I will load my scene in this case. Okay, so here I have my, well, my character and then my rig, my skeleton. In this case, it's a pipe. Okay, now what I should do at the moment is to have an animation right here. Well, in this case, I don't have an animation right inside this scene, but I, what I will do, I will go to the motion tab and then using, I will open the motion capture section and I will load mm, a specific clip, okay? So in this case, I will use this straight walking loop mail mm, clip. So this is motion capture data. So I click open and it opens this uh, panel here. These are the options to let 3ds Max know how to interpret the motion capture data, okay? So uh, in this case, I just leave it as it is. I click OK. It's not the point of this webinar to um, see how to import motion capture data into 3ds Max and in general how to animate, okay? Now, the character has disappeared. Well, actually, it has not disappeared. It has been moved by the animation I've loaded on top of this um, of this skeleton. As you can see here, we have you know, on the timeline, I can scrub it. Here we have all the keyframes. And if you have ever worked with motion capture data, this is quite common, okay, to have a keyframe per each frame, okay? So it's a very dense animation in terms of keyframes, okay? If we have animated inside directly of 3ds Max or other another 3D program, we would have less. So we have this animation, and as you can see here, this is a walk animation, okay? And the animation is actually moving, translating, um, transforming in position the old object. Now, one important thing here is the pelvis, root bone, okay? The root bone is the origin, the parent bone of all the bones in the skeleton structure. And one important uh, uh, requirement while exporting for anima is that this root have to have a motion, okay? Needs to be animated. So we need a physical movement changing in position keyframes for that um, bone, okay? This is very important because that motion, that root motion will be used inside anima when importing to define the speed and to use that speed and that motion clip inside all the um, simulation elements, specifically in the path two, okay? So with this said, what I simply have to do is just to select everything I want to export, go to the 3ds Mac menu, go to export, export selected. Mm, we could export, uh, use the uh, simple export, but I prefer always to select what I want to export and export, okay? So I will go to the folder where I want to export this, and I will call it my wall. Okay? You can choose, of course, the, the name you want. The type it has to be FBX. By default, it is this way in 3ds Max and in Maya, since they are Autodesk. But the idea is to export always to the, into the FBX format. So we click Save. And now, one important thing is to set correctly, uh, correctly sorry, these options. Now, one important thing is to be sure that the animation is being exported. But we need to do a step more. We have to go to the bake animation and activate this check because we want we want to bake, be sure that per, for each frame of the exported animation, there will be a keyframe. This is very, very important, okay? In this case, as uh, being this uh, motion capture data, this is already this way, okay? But we not always work the, with motion capture data, okay? So with this big animation, with the step one and the all animation from the, the zero key, the frame, keyframe, sorry, from the frame zero to the 101, okay? So 101 and 
I will skip exporting cameras. It wouldn't make any difference, uh, by the way, but to make the file smaller. So click OK, and that's it. Okay, very simple, very straightforward. This is important then to export to FBX and to add the actual animation, animation moving mm, the old body, including the root bone. Okay, so we go back to Anima and now, now we click again on the plus button. Okay, so now mm, we are not going to uh, import the previous FBX, the, the one that I already had. I will click on my walk. Okay, I click on open and then five units meters. That's okay. Automatic rotation. Yes. Here we have a log where some messages will appear. And sometimes if we have uh, any errors, they will appear there. So we click on import. It detects now the orientation. Okay. And here it is. If you remember in 3ds Max, I will show you again. Okay. As you can see from the top view. Here, you see, it's not going horizontally or vertically, it's going um, diagonally. So that orientation has been um, detected here in Anima and will be used as an offset to set correctly in Anima the animation. Okay, so let's click OK. And now we have this animation here inside. Okay, this is quite simple. Now, as you can see here in the library motion group, we have no uh, thumbnail. So to create the thumbnail, we can use uh, this button here we find in the clip information on the right side of the interface, okay? If I click here, it will take a snapshot and it will appear here in the panel. Now, it won't appear here in the motion clip until I click the Save button. As we saw previously in other webinars, each time the Save button um, highlights, it means that something has been changed and is pending to be saved. Okay, so I will click Save now, and you will see here the thumbnail correctly um, set. Now, in that panel, the clip information, we can also change the name. For example, I will call it Michele Poppy. Okay, that's it. We could also enter a description and so on. And then we have more things, but we will go into detail to categories and tags later. Okay. What I want to do is to work with the advanced loop and cycle editor, this mm, bottom head editor we have here. As you can see here, the timeline is playing, okay? By default, when we enter the editing mode, this is what happens, okay? And let's see, first of all, that we have here two curves. At the moment, there is a sort of little um, uh, visualization it's not an, an issue, it's not a problem. But if you use this marker here, for example, one of the two markers, the start marker or the end marker here, okay, and we just move it a bit, we will get the actual curves, okay? These are two acceleration curves related to the feet of the uh, skeleton structure, okay? Now, an acceleration curve is meant to understand for anima where the feet are actually um, touching the ground okay so if we see if you have a look at this curve we have this curve this is this horizontal uh, above curve and uh, below curve are the right and left foot okay just to be, uh, be clear now as you can see here there are uh, some places where the um, the curve is quite horizontal okay quite low so those are actually those places where probably Anima will take into consideration that we consider that the feet are touching the ground. And as you can see here in these, in these places, there is a sort of little rectangular, horizontal rectangular element. Okay. We have one here, one here, one here, and more of those. Okay. Those represent actually where Anima thinks, and usually it thinks right, the feet are touching the ground. One important thing to consider that we always need at least three of these elements defined here. If we have none, then we could have problems. We probably would have problems, okay? So as you can see here, the curve, it's quite, it repeats itself. We have three loops, but Anima, what I is considering, analyzing this curve, this motion clip, is that the start, the optimal at the moment, start of the this motion clip 
is here and the optimal n is here. And they are not exactly mm, correct, but it should work. Hmm? And to do to know this, we have a look. We always have need have to have a look here hmm, in this viewport hmm, if we if, if the loop is working. First of all, before working on this part, hmm, let's have a look at the options we have above. We will start on the right with the loop type. Okay. Here in Anima, we have two kind of loop. We have a cycle, which is exactly what it tells. It starts from the start, from the beginning, goes to the end, and then starts again, jumps directly, directly to the start and again. While the ping pong is starting from the beginning, going to the end, and then it doesn't jump to the, to the beginning. It goes straight back to the start and again. Ping pong, ping pong. This is the, the idea. In our case, of course, we are not interested in the ping pong type. Okay. Then going to the left, we have the clip type. The clip type is actually where we say to Anima when this clip should be used. Okay. And we have two situations. In this case, we have a walking animation. So uh, we have two contexts. We have the context where the actor is um, standing or walking are considered as the same. Of course, they are two different contexts, but the um, the actors in this case is considered uh, the same standing. Okay, and then sitting. In this case, since it is a motion clip about walking, it, it, it makes no sense to set it at sitting. Okay, so keep in mind this. But till now, it's quite simple. Then we have the two options a bit more. Um, Technical, let's say, but quite simple to understand. First one is precision threshold. Now we are working at the top precision. It means that this is the level of precision anime is using when interpreting the, the, the data we have imported. Let's say, for example, as in this moment, as in this case, we are working with motion capture data. Motion capture data, usually it's quite noisy. Now, usually also uh, what happens is that we pre-process this data when we import this data inside our 3D program, like, for example, 3ds Max. So in this case, we shouldn't be uh, use, reduce uh, touch this value. However, we could do this. I will show you in a moment, and then we have the loop detection threshold. Okay, so let's start using these uh, options. First of all, I will start playing with, with the start and end marker. Okay, I will start with the end marker on the right. Okay, and I will start doing this. As you can see, as soon as I move this, mm, the anima is changing where this loop, the start of this loop is starting. Okay, so something like this should be fine. Okay, always have a look mm, on how it looks here in the, in the in the viewport. Okay, now what we could do is, for example, to be sure that Anima has the time, the enough data to detect where the feet are um, placed on the ground, we could increase, for example, the loop detection threshold. For example, here, instead of A8 to 10. Okay, well, let's say something more, just to be 15. Okay, as you can see, these effects, these horizontal rectangles and areas, which represent exactly that loop detection threshold, okay? We're going backwards, okay? So we could, for example, fix something of the animation we've created, in this case, using motion capture data directly inside Anima, okay? So here I can take this, like this, and straight the head, okay? So this is quite nice. Mm -hmm. Same thing I could just try to use here to, I can say, actually, but we couldn't use this animation still because, because this animation, this motion clip has not been assigned to any category. Okay. If we go back to the drawing mode here and we go to motion clips. Okay. Here we have all these categories. Now these categories on one side, we use them to organize the motion clips. On the other side, we are uh, using this to tell Anima when to use them, okay? 
The local motion walk category are all those animations used when the character has to walk and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's go back to the editing mode. So here we go already coming within anima. Okay, and uh, here in the system categories, we can also create new categories. Okay, so keep in mind this. And here in these system categories, they tell me that there are some connections problems. Can you, uh, are you receiving me, hear me correctly? Please, someone uh, can answer me in the chat. Just to be sure that anyone is following correctly this webinar. Hello? Okay. Diego can hear me fine. Other? Okay, it seems that there is super choppy for David. Well, let's try to solve it. Okay, no. Uh, well. Sorry, sorry, uh, moment. It seems that there are several problems with audio and video. Try, uh, please try everyone to refresh your browser just to be sure that um, anything is going on, but it seems that Yes, Adam tells exactly the same thing. So let's see if this works as solution for others too. Okay. Okay, so it seems that now is it's working at least for the most of you. And sorry for those uh, who keeps um, having problem. Okay, I will keep going on. Keep in mind, by the way, that uh, this webinar will be uh, recorded. It's been recording, so you will be able to to watch it again in case just in case you keep having problems. Okay, so we were about the um, categories. Okay, on the right. So system categories are the, uh, is the list where all the categories, those coming from within Anima and those new we, we can create are placed. Okay, and here we have the locomotion walk. So to assign a category to the current category list, mm, it's quite simple. We can, we can click and drag or double click on it. Okay, I will double click. And now the locomotion walk has been assigned. So we'll click now on save button and let's check if this works. Okay, so let's go back to the drawing mode. And as you can see here in the locomotion walk, I have my new imported motion clip. Okay, so this said, we could start using it. Now, this is exactly as another motion clip, no problem at all, but how can Anima work, detect the uh, bone structure from an, uh, the, the bone structure I have in 3ds Max? Well, Anima, apart from the structure itself, all specifically um, use a specific naming convention. Okay, so let's go back to 3ds Max. And let's go here like this. Okay, and I will select this bone here. And as you can see here, we have in this name, this left up leg showing. So this is the naming convention Anima is using. But what if, for example, I want, not, I want to use a different one? Because for example, in my pipeline is, I am using a different one and so on. So I will use, for example, something like this. Sorry, I have. I have to change my 
keyboard as it, it appears. Okay, layout. So let's see, I want this. And also the other file, instead of using right and left, I will just use R and L. Okay, this you can choose, of course, as you prefer. So now what I would do is, well, let's say that I have a complete uh, different naming convention or just some one of them and so on and so forth. So it's quite simple. Okay, sorry, my mouse seems to be uh, have gone crazy. So I would export it again. I already had it. Okay, so I will import a new motion clip with different names. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we'll go back to editing mode. And here again, I click the plus button in the motion clip panel. And now I will import a different FBX. Okay, my work named. Okay, so I will click on open, abrir in, uh, in Spanish. Don't worry about this. It will open on your uh, machine if you have set English as the, the main language. Okay, so meters, again, yes, exactly the same options. And let's click on import. And this is what happens when you are trying to import a skeleton with a different naming convention. So. On the right, sorry, on the left, you have the incoming bone names. In the middle, there is the skeleton graph Anima is using, okay? And on the right, there are two lists. The first one is uh, the one of the mandatory bones. It means that I have, I must um, fill all these bones with the uh, related mm, here from the incoming mm, before I can keep importing. And then I have an optional bones list. Okay, so this, imp this is important because we have also another option. At the, at the bottom, on the right, is the symmetry option. And by default, is set to yes. This means what? I will show you now. So I will click, for example, the L leg on the right, on the left, sorry. And I will click and drag where? Well, where the left leg should be. So for example, here. And as you can see, because I, since I have this symmetry option set to yes, it recognized, it has detected the symmetrical bone name and assign it immediately. Okay, so we can do this, left up leg, same thing goes, right foot, for example, Right foot, where is, where are you? Right foot, and same goes for the left foot. So this way we can work, we can work faster. Hmm? As you can see here, the OK button is disabled because we still have to fill all the mandatory bones. Okay, I won't be filling everything. Now I won't be showing, it's quite self-explanatory, but keep in mind that there is a way to work also with a different naming convention. This is important, okay? So I will just skip this um, this import since it would be exactly the same as the others. I want I wanted just to show you these two. Okay, so let's go on. Uh, I want to import this, and that's it. Okay. Well, after this, let's import or and before export a motion clip and animation from a different platform. At the moment, we have used a three D program. Now, what I'm going to, to show you is a platform we have, okay, we have, which is called Mixamo. You probably know, if you don't know it, it's Mixamo.com, it's, um, it's part of the Adobe family, okay? It's a place where you can freely download characters and animations, okay, and create variations of those. So you can use them as placeholders, as preview animations, or to work, okay? So here it's quite simple. On the left, we have the, the list of the animation. Okay, in this case, I'm the animation tab here section. Okay, and here we can set, well, the, the size of the thumbnails, if we want them animated, uh, how many thumbnails for, per page, and of course, a search uh, field. We can use some of the filters that are already there and so on and so forth. On the right, we have the, the preview. Okay, at the moment, sometimes you have to refresh the page to being able to uh, have everything animating. Okay, just a second and you will see this. 
Okay, so here is the character I will be using to uh, show the animation. And well, on the right, uh, some buttons to download, uh, upload the character and so on and so forth. So what I'm interested in here is to in a walking animation again, but a different one, okay? Let's have more variation. So I will use this search field to search for walk, or look for walk animations, okay? And I will choose this one, okay? So I will select it. And as you can see here in the viewport, I'm able to see this character playing this animation. We have several controls to rotating, orbiting, panning, and zooming, okay? It's quite straightforward. On the right are some options. Hmm? The first four options are some values that let us create variations on top of the animation, base animation, okay? So this is a very good way to start selecting an animation, make some changes here, and then export it, downloading it, okay? We will see just two options. The first one is the trim options option. Now, as you can see here, you can define just a slice of this animation. I want to take everything. Okay. The more we, the more information we feed into Anima, the better the loop detection will be. Okay. This is very, very important. Even when we create our personal animations, try not to create just a loop, just a cycle. You can create at least two, three, even uh, three, even better. Okay. And another thing, as you can, as you remember, I told you that we need that that the root bone, in this case the pelvis, is moving. So very important, fundamental is not to activate this in place option. If we set this in place, as you can see, the animation will be played in place. So the root bone won't be affected by the animation. So this would be a problem inside Anima, okay? So this has to be left mm, deactivated. So this said, we click on download. Mm, we set the format at the X, as you can see, it comes uh, by default. Uh, we can export just the skeleton and the animation without the skin, without the uh, character. Frame per second, uh, 30, and no keyframe reduction, okay? So download. Uh, wait a couple of seconds to to have the the web uh, the website be prepared and then we can save this animation where uh, where we want okay so I will call this mixamo uh, limb walk anim okay just to be sure hmm? and then save what that in in Spanish okay so they said we go back to anima hmm? and we go back to import this Clip. We already know how to do this, and we browse and we select this new animation. Click on Open, and here, be careful because Mixamo works in centimeters. Okay, so we need to set it to centimeters. If not, we would have problems uh, with uh, with import and especially with the viewing uh, viewing of the model. Okay, so let's import it. It has detected correctly the, the direction, okay? And even if there are some warnings, don't worry, okay? It works. So let's click on close and we get this animation. As you can see here, this is this animation. We again have this curve flattened. So we just used this marker just a moment. We have to move it a bit and we have the curve uh, right, okay? And uh, so, what we want to do now is, first of all, hmm, let's assign it uh, to the category uh, locomotion walk, okay? So I will do the same, left click and drag here, and look what happens. We have this reddish background. This means that something is wrong. So if we try to save it, we could save this animation, but we try to use it, hmm, there are problems, okay? So what we need to do now is to play with the markers mm, and these options here mm, in order to avoid, to get rid of this uh, red background, okay? So first of all, I want to use uh, this marker just to set correctly mm, something like this mm, and something like this, for example, uh, a bit more, let's see. You have to play each Animation is a bit different. Now, probably I need to do this. Okay, a bit more. 
Well, first thing, it seems now, oh, I will just go a bit more here. Okay, now, what I will do is try, for example, to play with this loop detection threshold. Give uh, to anima a bit more range, okay? I will use, instead of eight, 20 in this case, okay? And as you can see here, these uh, loop detection uh, ranges are bigger. Mm, let's see if this work a bit more. Okay. And let's try to see if lowering the precision, precision as you can see. You see? Now, the orange curve represents the uh, resulting curve, in this case, with less precision has been applied a sort of smooth to this uh, to the original curve. And as you can see, the red um, the red background has disappeared. Okay, so we can play again a bit bit more like here, for example. Okay, let's have a look here. It seems to work quite fine. It's quite decent. Okay, so now what I can do is to save. Mm -hmm. So let's save it. And I will again, mm, have a look here, the neck, I will try to fix it a bit here. If I want, I could, for example, uh, okay, here, open a bit more of this arm, and that's it, okay? Let's click Save. And, well, before saving, I will just create the snapshot, okay? So I have the, the screen, the screenshot here, mm, the preview, thumbnail, okay? We can, for example, here, change the name, okay? And then walking, okay, and say now. Well, this is quite interesting, but I want to explain you how tags work. If categories are something that we use to organize motion clips and tell anima in which context we need to use those motion clips, tags are used to create relations between motion clips and characters, okay. Let's say, for example, that I want these motion clips being played only by certain characters, okay? So let's do this. I will go here in the um, uh, tags panel. We have exactly the same kind of lists, system tags and current tags, okay? I will, I will um, remove the default tag here, okay? And I will go down, scroll down the system tags and click this plus button to add a new tag. Same thing goes for categories, okay? They work exactly the same. And I will create this link tag, okay? And here it is. As you can see here, only this tag here has this X button, okay? Because this is not a system, well, a tag coming within Anima. This is a custom tag I've created. So by using this X button here in the system tag list, I'm going to remove, delete this tag from the project. Okay, when on the other side, I use the X button on a category or a um, tag in the current list, it's just removing the mm, mm, removing that tag from that motion clip um, in that case. Okay, so I will assign this limp tag to this motion clip and I click save. Okay, now. I told you that uh, tags are meant to create relations between motion clips and actors or characters uh, are exactly the same, actors and characters. So what I will do is just create a duplicate of this character here, okay? So just a couple of seconds, okay? And I found I find this character here in the project section. Mm -hmm. The same thing goes for the motion clips, okay? But now if I want to access to this actor mm -hmm. options, I have to change my selection in the motion clips, okay? I have to select the rest pose here. And now I'm working on top of the character, okay? We've talked about this in, in the previous webinar, okay? So I won't be uh, explaining more about this. So here I have the tags of this character, okay? So here I have the current tags and the system tags. And as you can see here, the system tags have also the limp tag I've created previously in that motion clip, okay? So what I'm going to do is just to be sh to be clear and to uh, with you, so to let you understand perfectly, I will remove all the current tags assigned to this duplicated character and I will assign only the limp 
tag. Okay, and I will click save. Now I'm going to the mode, the drawing mode, okay, using this toggle. Okay, and here, as you can see, I have this path with these actors. Now, as you can see here, I have not defined a specific list of actors. Well, I'm going to do it now. So to do this, I'm going to uh, the library actors, and I'm going to select, of course, my new character here and other characters. Hmm? Left click and drag here in this crowd section. And now I have hmm, this character and others assigned to this path. So what happens is when I click generate, look what happens. If I go here, you see this character here, if I play the animation, hmm, while well, the simulation here, this character is using that animation that motion clip without me having assigned it, assigned, it, assigned it directly to him. Why? If I select this character and I go to locomotion walk clip, as you can see, the link walking has been assigned. Okay, however, sorry, moreover, <laughs> if I try to see how many motion clips I have in this category, now in the locomotion walk clip, I only have the link walking. Why? Because this character as a tag has, has the link tag. So only those motion clips having the same tag assigned will be shown here in this category, locomotion walk. Okay? So by doing this, we can create different situations. Okay? We can control which motion clips are played by which uh, actors. Okay, this is a very powerful way of creating variations and to create more um, realistic results here in Anima. Okay, now the last thing I want to show you is how to delete a tag in a category. I already mm, told you how to do this, but I want to show you one important thing when you do it. Okay, so let's go back to the editing mode and I will select this character here. Well, not the, that character but this character here. Now, at this moment, I told you that if I click on this X of this tag in the current tags list, it simply goes back to the system tags, okay? You see here. But if I try to delete it permanently from the project, hmm, now Anima tells me something worth me, and is, if you try to delete a tag or a category that is being is currently in use, mm, this could have um, this could cause issues, mm, unexpected results. So uh, keep in mind this. So at the moment, for example, this character has no mm, is not being used here. Okay. If I save it now and I go back to the drawing drawing here, you see this character keeps a reference to that motion clip, okay? So let's try, let's be careful with this, okay? So let's try again to delete this, um, this tag, and now, again, the same warning, because, because we still have some relation with this, because that tag is assigned still to that motion clip we have here. You see? So what we should do is to select here the global actor with that motion clip selected, remove this motion clip, save it, and now we would be able to delete it. Okay? So keep in mind this. So every time you see that message, it means that something else, something, um, uh, some motion clip or actor is still using that tag or category. The same thing goes for categories. Okay? So, today we are seeing how to export from a 3D program such as 3ds Max. I repeat, this works exactly the same in any other, any other program, 3D program, that lets, lets you export to FBX, okay, which is the format we want to use. One other thing I want to show you is that actually mm, all the clips mm, we have imported are stored inside our project inside the library 
clip here in Eclipse. So all the work we have done is available to be copy and pasted into another project, okay? Always keep in mind this. So we export it from 3ds Max, then so a 3D program. We export it from a platform uh, such as Mixamo, which is quite uh, useful. And we saw also how to solve the issue of different naming conventions mm, between our uh, bone structure and mm, the one Anima is expecting from us, okay? And then we saw how to use categories and tags to create relations between motion clips and actors and how to organize uh, better the motion clips inside and so for today this we have um, solved some of the issues and uh, the questions you have been uh, asking in in the chat and what i want to 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 tell you is to remember that we have if you want to know more about um, how to use Anima, if you want to dive more into detail, remember that on Vimeo there is this Anima course, more than seven hours uh, course about how to use Anima, explain everything in detail, okay? And one other important thing is to follow us on Facebook. Hmm? In this case, there is a specific Facebook group about this coffee break talks hmm, where you will find well news you will find polls uh, that we will create to have more feedback well the idea is to keep in touch and have feedbacks for us very important to uh, better develop this uh, tool we're working on okay so this said we will see you in the next webinar see you soon